else, we can just keep on rolling. Keep, you can let them in. Um, so Donna, there's a question in the chat. What's your favorite exercise or movement strategy? And um, are we recording, Miss Stephanie? Yep, just started. All, all right, so we'll get started with class number three of our mindfulness and movement class with um, Stephanie. You want to do your brief intro? Yes, I am Stephanie Luares. I am a body positive personal trainer and fitness nutrition specialist, the owner of Heart and Soul Fitness and Wellness here in Lake Havasu City, Arizona. Not quite as cold as the rest of the country, but we've had some wind, so we are below 50 right now. <laughs> yep, and I'm Robin Pfaff. I'm a certified health and wellness coach. I work with women who have fibromyalgia 50 and better. So we're super happy to have those who are here with us live and will be joining us. And we're equally happy to know that some of you will be watching this on the, the tape later. So today I thought I'd talk about for a few minutes managing stress and the contrast between a mindful approach and getting caught in a mind trap. At our house, my husband and I have a couple of expressions for when we've been communicating with someone and we feel like we got hooked by them or sometimes we'll say we got tangled up. And what we mean by that often is that we started, found ourselves starting to take responsibility for someone else's problem or situation. And we might be offering advice or we might just be getting agitated somehow. And so we have this little process we go through together where we sort out what part of that situation do we own, do I own, and what part of that situation belongs to someone else, someone else owns it. Going through that process has saved our skin so many times. And um, I think that's often a source of stress for us when we're not clear about what we need to take responsibility for and what we don't need to take responsibility for. And it isn't always easy to sort that out. You know, sometimes it's a process of figuring that out. And so um, that's a, asking who owns the problem is a really good strategy. And then we ask, what's my part to play? What, um, what role can I play here that I'm integrity with that doesn't overstep someone else's responsibility. I think it's, there's another principle here that's important to remember in managing stress and sorting out responsibilities. And that is a, um, a, a teaching that you often hear in 12 step programs, which is the definition of insanity, which is um, repeating, doing the same things over and over and expecting a different result. So that reminded, when I was thinking about these things, it reminded me of a poem that is also part of the 12 step tradition. And it's called Autobiography in Five Short Chapters. You might have heard of it. And what I'm going to do for us is I'm just going to read it out loud. But I invite you to, as I'm reading it, um, you can you can take a breath and kind of center yourself and just get prepared to listen to the words and see what resonates with you. You can um, you can notice um, where you feel you are in the in the stages that or the chapters of the poem and where you like to be. And we might have a moment or two to share after I read the poem. I'm going to get just a drink of my tea because my voice wants to get real hoarse. All right, just take a moment, get centered, take a nice breath in, nice breath out, and listen to this autobiography in five short 
chapters. Chapter number one, I walk down the street. There is a deep hole in the sidewalk. I fall in, I'm lost. I'm helpless, it isn't my fault. It takes forever to find a way out. Chapter number two, I walk down the same street. There's a deep hole in the sidewalk. I still don't see it. I fall in again. I can't believe I'm in the same place. It isn't my fault. Still takes a long time to get out. Chapter three, I walk down the same street. There's a deep hole in the sidewalk. I see it there. I still fall in. It's habit. It's my fault. I know where I am. I get out immediately. Chapter four, I walk down the same street. There's a deep hole in the sidewalk. I walk around it. Chapter five, I walk down a different street. Hmm. We have a couple minutes here and we're just a small group. So if anybody wants to share, oh, and Sue's coming in to join us, so that's great. If anybody wants to share what resonated, where they think they are, what stood out to you, we'd love to hear. That was really powerful. <laughs> um, Had you heard it before, Stephanie? Well, you know, I, I was trying to think, I'm like, I think I've heard that before. And then as you started reading, I'm like, oh yeah, I've totally heard that before. But as you were reading, um, it really reminded me of um, the, the four competencies. Um, and I'm totally not going to get into like the whole psychology of like unconscious incompetence and like conscious competence and all these other things. But it boils down to like, we don't know what we don't know. And that, that whole learning process that we evolve, because sometimes we don't get it the first time. That's so like, true. You, you know, it, it, it's, you know, in school, like, like think about, you know, when we learned our multiplication tables, you know, it, it wasn't this thing that we just learned, you know, two times two, and it was like, okay, it's rote memory. You know, we sat there with our flashcards over and over. I think all of us were kind of that age where it was like the commit to memory thing, where it was the flashcards and fill in the multiplication table over and over and over and, you know, repeat that skill until we got it you know, we, we don't know what we don't know. And so we may, we may learn something, but then we kind of have to keep learning it. And then every time we learn it, we learn it from a different place in life. Absolutely. We learn it from a different perspective. And so I think each time it sinks in a little bit differently until we reach that point of, ha oh, ha, oh, now go down a different road, go down a different street. Does anybody else want to share a thought or two about the poem or the, what I was talking about? Um, getting, avoiding getting tangled up with other people's issues. Go ahead, Debbie. Can't hear you very well, though. I do have a little bit of something to share. I think the whole looks different in different situations. Mm -hmm. different relationships or different situations um a home situation versus a work situation totally mm -hmm. different holes but the Absolutely. same principle yes yes and like stephanie was saying it can take a lot of trial and error or a lot of practice deliberate practice and learning um one thing my husband and i do is we've learned to to when a situation is pretty complex and we're expecting to interact with some people that are challenging, we will actually role play. 
So what do you, if, if so-and-so says this, what are you going to say? And that we might still end up going down the same street and we might end up in the hole again, but at least we know where we are and we can get out a little faster. Sometimes that, that is a very appropriate goal. We can't always go down a different street. Sometimes we can, sometimes we can't. So any other comments about this autobiography in five chapters? Thanks for sharing this time with us. Were you gonna say something, Donna? Yeah, I just wanted to say um, my interpretation, I guess because of the day I'm having, I took it as um, we have to be responsible for our own actions. And that's kind of a gift in and of itself if you yes. choose to accept that gift. And um, some of us belong to another group. And one of my early lessons in that group was this saying I had never heard before, which was something like, what you think of me is none of my business. So um, it's like, that's on you. Yeah. And I'm not taking that. I mean, I'm not going to like, you know, embrace it and wrap myself around it. Because yeah. I'll, I'll do me, you do you. I like that expression too. And I love the way that you um, phrase that, that it's a gift to take yeah. responsibility. Yeah. And it can pay off um, big dividends when we can sort that out. Yeah. So I'm going to turn it over to Stephanie. On the screen, she's to my left. I don't know where she is on your screen. Um, for our movement strategies. Excellent. Well, I'm so excited y'all are with us again today, whether you're with us here live or recorded. Um, you know, we're all this little family now. Like, I'm sad next week is week four. We're going to have to like come back again and keep doing something in the future. But then I'm going to change my camera angle so I can back up just a little bit. So, Last week, we worked on our upper body. Next week, we're going to work on our legs. So today, we're going to work on our core. All right. Now, when we think about our core muscles, the uh, kind of the idea we get in our mind is like what we've heard out in mainstream culture that you know, our core muscles is just our abs. Like we, we hear, you know, the six pack abs and everything, you know, like that. But when we look at strengthening our core muscles, and I'm sorry if you hear construction in the background, the neighbor's house is being worked on. But um, when we talk about our core muscles, we're actually talking about the section of our body really from about our mid chest down past our hips because this is really the most crucial part of our body because we're strengthening the, we're strengthening not only the abdominal muscles, but we're getting into the oblique muscles. We're strengthening the lower back. We're strengthening the muscles around the hip because we're protecting our spine. We're protecting um, everything around our internal organs. We're protecting the most important parts of our body. And so what we're doing is we're building that structure that really kind of keeps everything safe. And the, the core also builds into our hips and our legs. And so when we talk about um, people that have things like back problems, it's not only important to have a strong core, but we also need to have strong hips and strong legs as well. Because if we're only concentrating on just the core, we're ignoring everything else that all the systems work together. So when we talk about, you know, kind of targeted exercises, it's not really something that's beneficial in, in a good full body fitness program. We really have to concentrate on the whole body. We can split our fitness through the week. You know, I'm working on this part today, this part today, this part today, but we have to concentrate on the full body to really be healthy and fit. So today we're just gonna concentrate on some core exercises. We're gonna, the exercises we're gonna do 
are both going to be adaptable for standing or sitting down. And so what, what we're going to be doing is really focusing on posture and what is your comfortable range of motion. And so the first thing that we're going to do is just what's called a stabilizer or a rotation. And so again, like we talked about last week with our posture is if you're doing this standing, having that good posture where your, uh, your feet are about a hip width apart. So your hips or your feet are kind of stacked with your hips. Your spine is nice and straight. Your shoulders are back and you're gonna extend your arms. And if it's not comfortable to fully extend your arms, you can just bring them in so your elbows are kind of tucked in. But you can just extend those arms. And what we're gonna do is just rotate. And as you rotate, you're just gonna go as far as that range of motion is comfortable. So if it's only comfortable, just to turn a little bit, maybe you have a stiff back, maybe you feel a little bit of pulling, then just go as far as comfortable. If it feels okay to turn a little bit further, then turn a little bit further. But you're just gonna go side to side. And then when you're seated, you wanna be kind of on the edge of your chair. So you have that good posture and you just rotate the same way. Just making sure you have that good posture as you're seated. And you may notice the difference between seated and standing, that that range of motion is a little bit different, that when you're standing, you might be able to rotate a little bit wider than when you're seated. You might notice a little bit of difference there. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take those hands again. You can either do it if it's not comfortable to have your hands fully extended, you can bring them in. But with those hands fully extended, we're gonna bring our hands up over our head and we're gonna bring it down to one side. So kind of like you're chopping wood. We actually call this the lumberjack chop. So you're bringing it diagonal across your body and down. And then you just wanna, after you do about five to 10 repetitions, you wanna just do it on the other side. And same thing when you're sitting, you wanna be on the edge of the chair with that good posture and you just come down to the side of your legs and just bend down. And then we just alternate sides. And one thing is if you get tired very quickly on doing a whole set on one side, you can even just alternate each time and kind of keep it interesting. But you really only want to do a set of maybe five to 10 on each side. So you can kind of shake that out. So the next one we have is, oh, my dog has decided to join us. But this one, we're working these side muscles. So standing, what we're gonna do is we kind of make a muscle man arm and we bring our knee up and out to the side. So if you need to grab onto something for balance, 
Sometimes that's good to have something opposing for balance, but we bring that knee up into the side. And so we feel that not only in the legs and the arms, but we're getting a good stretch. And how we adapt that for being seated is, actually, yeah. for being seated, you can do this when seated. You want to bring the knee out to the side. So we have our good posture, we're seated. You want to open your leg, bring that leg out to the side, and just do a gentle knee lift from the side. So you have one leg forward, you have one leg on the side of the chair. And it's easier if you're in a chair without arms, and you're doing it that way when you're seated. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do some standing crunches. Now, I'm sure many of us are familiar with either crunches or sit-ups that we do on the ground, where it's, it's something that can be very stressful on our back, on our necks, on our shoulders. Plus, sometimes if we're in a lot of pain, it's difficult to get up off the ground. So we're gonna do some standing crunches. We're gonna do some seated crunches. One thing to remember is while in the lumberjack chop, we did the motion where we bent down. We're not gonna quite bend as far as we did in that movement. We're only gonna bend about 45 degrees. If you think maybe in the lumberjack chop, you bent about 90 degrees, we're only gonna bend about halfway as far. Because when, when you do a crunch where you're laying down, all we're doing is we're coming just part way up. We're not coming all the way up. We're just engaging those abdominal muscles just a little bit. And what we wanna do is we wanna lead with our chin. Because what happens when we do a crunch is that it's really easy to tuck our chin to our chest and really put stress on our neck or scrunch up those shoulders. And that's where we start to put stress on the shoulders, on the neck and on the back. But if we think about leading with our chin, it helps us to relax the neck, the shoulders, and the back. So what we're gonna do is if you think about aiming your chin forward, where you wanna go, it helps you to relax that upper body and just, we're gonna cross our hands across the front of our body and we're just gonna lean forward and back, leading with that chin to pick a spot forward on the ground and come up. And when we do that, we're not crunching our chin down, we're not getting those shoulders up in our ears and putting that stress on our back, neck, and shoulders. And then the same thing seated is just, we continue to lead forward with our chin. And then another variation on that crunch that you can do for a little bit more challenge is you can add a rotation to that. 
in going side to side in picking a spot over in the corner to lead your chin to. So you can add a bit of rotation to that and get a little bit of challenge with that because then we're starting to add that rotation and keep that flexibility in our waist and hips as well. And so you can kind of mix and match those exercises. Again, as you build up in comfort with those, you wanna do about five to 10 in a set. And as they're comfortable, you can build up to two or three sets at a time to get a really good workout. And, you know, those are things that we did the standing. If you're feeling good, do it standing because you're getting that blood flow from head to toe. If you're having a day where you're like, maybe I'm a little bit tired. I, you know, my feet hurt, my legs hurt, but I still wanna move a little bit then do it in the chair or you know you're just maybe having a little bit of balance issue but you know i'm okay to move then that would be appropriate to do it in the chair so because you know your body you know what you're capable of so it's weighing what can i do that's a great option for exercises like these that's why we do this is what I can do when I'm standing. This is what I can do when I'm sitting and still have the same benefit. We often get the stigma of just because I did it sitting, it wasn't the same workout. You're building the same muscle. You're getting the same, the same benefit from it. You're building the same long and short muscle fibers. It's no less beneficial to you. So I love it, Stephanie. Those were great stretches. Do you think in the next email or maybe the last one, we can, maybe we'll do it on the last one. We'll just list the different movement strategies and also the different mindfulness strategies that yes, we did. Yes, we're going to put that, that out in the last one. Yeah. So we have a cup. Well, if you need to go, it's by my clock, it's um, almost one minute to the half hour. But if you can stay for a moment or two, Stephanie and I are happy to stay and answer.